Okay, so before I start this video, I really like highlighting a lot of the really nice comments that I get. So the last comment I got on my Sam Fender cover was from Roger Curtis. He said, awesome content and got a new subscriber. So that was really nice. Um, today I'm going to talk about my EP that came out a month ago. And I'm going to mainly talk about the creative process of making it, but the entire process from inspiration, songwriting, production, and releasing, publishing. Um, and I did it for free. With my method of making music, you kind of don't need any money. I can kind of argue that. So first things first. Um, My EP is called Where Are My Friends? And I got this line from a line in my diary and I thought it was like really, really strikingly kind of lonely and sad. And it was such a simple sentence. I was just writing about, I was like wondering where they were. And I was like, hmm, that'd be a really interesting title. And I started out and I was like, I'm going to write about like loneliness and things like that too. Um, in my point life in college and I ended up doing the whole EP like from my dorm like recording it and like making it in my dorm which is like really really interesting so the first song on the EP is called love you hate me um so now I'll get more into the process of how I write a song. So I always get an idea for lyrics first. I listened to this song you might know <laughs> called Candy by Robbie Williams and it was like in it's very random it's not music I listen to. It was featured in a Just Dance game. <laughs> anyway I'll come around to how I made my song. Um, it was really weird because I was just listening to the lyrics and I was like, what if I change the song and tweak it a little bit? Because Candy is about how a girl thinks that she's kind of better than everyone. And I was like, what if you kind of take that person that you idolize and show the perspective from the other person who kind of feels worse about themselves? because someone else is so perfect. So as it pertains to me, I kind of riffed on the sort of like kind of fan worshiping culture and like idol culture. So I was like, what if I wrote a song about me liking an idol? And a lot of this idolization in our society is like females idolizing males. So that's really what the song's about. The more kind of personally I felt worse about myself when I was looking at these successful people who seem to be perfect and then it starts to degrade my own self-worth. So that's what that song is about. Um, and for the sound, which I think of after I think of lyrics, I kind of lean to like Panic at the Disco is a big like pop rock influence for me. So I was like, make it sound kind of like Mona Lisa and again I have no like production experience so it's not the best produced thing ever but I have to start somewhere so that's why I'm making this EP in this video to be a starting place and you're not gonna like learn and improve if you don't try so so I kind of just listened to a lot of Panic! and Disco and a lot of like Metric which is the band I found out from uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World and I kind of listened to those bands and tried to like emulate that because I didn't have any like song making experience so I got inspiration from video games, movies, like it's very very random. So, also at the end of Love You Hate Me um, I repeat think you're perfect, think you're perfect again and again and then the beat dilapidates and it all falls apart so it's kind of 
me showing the mirage the perfection of the idols is like fake and that's why I chose to do that and I really wanted the ending to be kind of not what you expect. The next song is Fantasy which was like really early on and I wrote these songs all last year so I really rushed through this process. I'm a rusher. It's what I do. I kind of just put it out when it's not perfect and then I kind of just learn from it instead of being a perfectionist and taking like years to do something. That's just my approach. Um, and then fantasy is about just girls being super scrutinized about their parents and especially for me because I told you guys I've been like bullied and people are always telling me I'm ugly and stuff like that. So it's just about like how you can never never please someone. Um, I really wanted it to sound pop rocky. In Too Deep was I named it yes that because of the Sum 41 song In Too Deep. Um, this song's kind of random. It's not really about anything but it's kind of just about how you think that something may start with someone and then nothing really happens. This song I was not gonna publish but it sounded okay in the process like when I was in the process of producing these songs so it was like this is good enough so that's like my starting off point. Another Lonely Heart was a song I like didn't want to put on the EP. I this whole process is really hard to end up putting anything out. Um, one song didn't make it on this EP and a lot of songs I didn't want to make it because they just weren't good enough. So I had to change the sound of Another Lonely Heart so many times to make it work. Um, so I basically, I don't, if you listen closely enough, it sounds like I wanted it to sound like Uncomfortable by Wallace. I kind of just stole the like sound and then changed a different key. And what saved the song is the pre-chorus. Um, where it go, will I always be only? And that melody was from a completely different song. I don't even know what song, but it wasn't supposed to go on that song. And it ended up fitting. And that's what saved that entire song. Um, and in terms of production, I just played around. I picked the Uru, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, and kind of just played along with that. And it really made the song work. And I also wanted to try putting in a, um, a round at the very end of the song just to, I don't know, bring everything, tie everything together. The last song is You're Gonna Go Far Kid, which is also the title of an the Offspring song and I listen to more The Offspring than any human should and it's kind of bad um but this song sounds nothing like that band but I kind of wanted to make a sort of indie pop sound um I was the idea for the lyrics of the song came from I was watching this movie on Netflix <laughs> not a plug but it's called Handsome Devil it's an Irish film and this band called Big Star um, has a song called 13 and it's like something along the lines tell your dad to get off your back or someone get off your back. And I was like wow that's such an interesting song and what if I make it about my um, experience with like pressure from my parents to make something of myself. Um, so you're gonna go far kid is kind of this like the anticipation of and the pressure of trying to make something of herself and it's kind of like encouraging and at the same time being a little pessimistic about the future because you're just really uncertain um, and you have no idea you end up even doing what you love with your life and you can end up just spending your life doing things you don't really want to do so anyway there's a little bit of cynicism there but I wanted to make it kind of light sounding. I'm still like getting closer to what sound I want and everything that I'm writing in the future is not going to sound like this. Um, so that was the writing process. I used GarageBand. Uh, <laughs> the learning curve was not good <laughs> but basically how I I guess produce is you know 
I lay the beat. Um, I use these electronic guitars, which I, they do not sound the best, but I'm trying to create an EP with no money. So, <laughs> um, that's why I do do that. Um, luck was really not on my side because I bought a bass guitar and a mic and they all broke and I brought all this equipment and all broke. So I had to use all electronic instruments. So I, I used a lot of electronic keyboards and synthesizers. Um, I use recordings of me playing pianos I have at home or at school um, throughout the EP and then of course my own vocals and I do not know how to use the effects but some of the effects um, are used in the recordings of the songs. Um, they're kind of like automatically, <laughs> I clearly don't know how to use GarageBand, they kind of automatically turn on when you record. And then there's a bunch of different types of mics that you can use um, to produce effects on your vocals in GarageBand and I'm still learning how to do all of that. So in the process of producing, I kind of just went every day, I guess <laughs> I'm giving advice, you kind of just have to work every day. I jumped around when song the song and that drove me insane. Um, so it's much better to work on one song at a time, but I can't do that. <laughs> so, but that's highly what I recommend, do one song at a time. And like, don't give up, but kind of recognize when you need to just use the song, a song for a different project altogether and kind of set it aside. So you can end up completing what you did. So I kind of already predetermined what songs I wanted on the EP, but I kind of just made sure I had cushion room if one of the songs didn't, weren't, wasn't good enough, I make sure I had enough room. So when it comes to publishing, <laughs> it's a mess. If you want to pay for like high quality publishing, there's DistroKid and a bunch of different other ones. Um, allegedly, United Masters and Record Union are free distribution sites or whatever. Um, I used RootNote. Um, it was pretty easy, but the website does crash a lot. It's not a very good website. But it got the job done. Um, you had to insert your album details, um, audio, artwork, and then choose which stores. Um, I choose. There's Tidal, Amazon, Apple, Music, YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. Um, so I just choose those and maybe a couple others. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, it said, now this is where I was confused, and this is why I'm making this video a month after it came out. It said it would take 28 days to process the release of the EP, and I didn't know <laughs> when in the 28 days. So I like realized a couple weeks later that it was already on Spotify. And then from there, you have to sign in Spotify and create your profile on there. Um, now I have three listeners, so I really, really um, would love your support. And also, I'm a rusher, so I'm already making my second EP. Um, it sounds nothing like this EP. It's about um, how technology affects our culture, our mental health, our daily lives, and all the different social issues that come up with social media. So that's what I'm working on now, and I'm going to make a video about what that EP is about pretty soon. So thank you so much for watching. I would really appreciate if you listened to my music. Um, it would just like be major motivation for me and I hope I motivated someone else. You uh, don't need money to put music out. You need a dedication. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Remember, license out to get you.